Hi and welcome back. Now in this video I'm going to talk about the different ways to connect the board to your computer. Now you can use FireWire, you can use Wi-Fi, and you can use Ethernet. All of those different technologies will work to connect the board for remote controlling. However, if you want to record, you'll need to use the FireWire connection. Now you could check that there might be other options that come out. They have talked about this board having a replaceable card on the back where you might be able to do audio over Ethernet using the Dante protocol or Thunderbolt may become available at some point in the future. So if you're watching this in the future, which you almost certainly are, just check with Personas to see if some of those other options are available. Right now, the only option is FireWire 800. So you need a computer with FireWire 800 if you want to record and play back through the board or Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt will work just fine on most computers using a simple Thunderbolt to FireWire 800 adapter and that's how I frequently connect. But my computer here has FireWire 800. I'm going to connect and then you'll be able to see what happens. Now normally if I'm doing any connections I don't like to do it with the board on. I just find that it's more reliable to turn the board off and then make the connection. So I'm going to go around the back of the board, connect the FireWire 800 cable, turn it back on. Now you can see that Universal Control discovered it right away. Now I wanted to point out another thing is you can only connect one board at a time through FireWire. So you'll see these things here are all related to that FireWire connection, the sample rate. And here's where it says external External basically means that the clock source is in the mixer. The mixer itself is always the master in this system. And so you can't change it here. And external means external relative to the computer. Now safe mode is something worth explaining. Normally the computer when it's connected with FireWare will determine the correct buffer size for the output buffers for playback. And it will choose from normal safe mode 1, safe mode 2, safe mode 3. These all have just slight increases in the buffer size for more stable playback. And mine always calculates off to safe mode 1. If you don't like that, you could put it on normal or try the other ones. I just leave it on safe mode 1. And it also shows the block size, not something you can set from here. Now beyond that, we can see here we've got a FireWire symbol and the mixer itself. And I showed you this before. You can click on that and Virtual Studio Live, or what I call VSL, will pop up. So that's the first kind of connection. So next, I'm going to show you how it works if we have an Ethernet connection. So I'm going to shut off the board, disconnect FireWire, and then connect Ethernet, and then I'll be back. Now over here on Universal Control, you can see the Universal Control Launcher shows this network symbol. It looks like a Wi-Fi symbol, but it really can't tell the difference between a board connected by Wi-Fi or by Ethernet. So we're connected by Ethernet if we click here. Now we can do remote control, but you won't be able to record through the board, and the Smart Wizards won't actually work. It says it's currently not available if I click on that right there. Now if you connected the Ethernet without restarting the board, you can click on system and go to the networking page and you should see ethernet right here if for some reason you don't try hitting store to join and sometimes that will help discover it but it's easier just to turn it off turn it back on a lot of times if you connect it it will just discover it right away wi-fi takes another step so the next thing i'm going to do is disconnect the ethernet cable turn off the board and we'll put in the wi-fi adapter i have the wi-fi adapter right here so we're going to install it and again, we could just stick it in there, but I'm not. I'm going to actually turn the board off, put it in, and then restart the board. All right, so the board's back up and running, but it didn't, at least initially here, see the Wi-Fi connection. So in order to get Wi-Fi going, we go into System on the board, and then go to Page 2, which is the network setup. You can see it's scanning. It was still scanning the networks, and right now it says Network Name is None. 
we actually want to set it to the local area network that we're using right here. You can see there's a lot of them in the air here, but the one for my router is this one called PBJ. So it says press store to join. So I press store here and then it asks for the password. So I'm going to use the value encoder knob here to put in my password. And after I've done that, I'll hit store to continue and then we'll be able to connect to the network. So we'll just go ahead and do that. All right, so I've got my password dialed in. I'm going to hit store to continue. And that worked. You can see now my network name is PBJ, which is the name of my Wi-Fi network. And it's assigned me an IP address. And at the same time, back over on Universal Control, the mixer actually popped up. Now that's the third way to connect. Now what if you have multiple mixers connected? Well, you can only connect one by FireWire. I'm going to turn on my 24 channel board, which is also on Wi-Fi. And you'll see that after it boots up, that you'll see the additional mixer come up on the screen as well. And you can choose between them. And there it is. Now we can choose VSL between either of the mixers. The mixer uses this order of precedence when it looks at the connections because you could potentially have all three of these things connected at the same time. So it prefers FireWire first, then Ethernet, and then Wi-Fi. So that's an explanation of all three ways to connect a StudioLive mixer to your computer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.